Are you? This video is a clarification regarding comments and narration of a video on the Glebe Standing Stones, or the, as they're also known as the Nymphsfield Stone Circles, and a video that I made on the Beyond Room 313 channel. I'll put the link below so you can check back and forth. I made a comment in that video that the god Lu was killed in the second battle of Moitura. In orthodoxy of Irish mythology, that's incorrect. Although it's not incorrect, it's, it's, I'm going to explain to you why I said that. Firstly, I want to talk about what the battle of Moitura is and what the Celtic and pagan gods of Ireland should be seen as. Firstly, the most important thing of all to know in all this is that the Irish mythological pantheon, like the Norse mythological pantheon, was written down by Christian monks who constantly Christianized elements of all the stories so as to make them dovetail the consciousness of the ancient pagan Irish into the new Hebrew consciousness Second Temple Rabbinical Hebrew Consciousness from the Middle East, called, called Christianity. Now, this also happened in the Norse sagas and Eddas. Now, the, the Celtic gods, were Lu, Nuada, Satanta, although some of them may, could be, considered to be based on historical people uh, maybe perhaps Finn McCool and maybe perhaps uh, Cook Cullen uh, but that's speculative a lot of this belief that was they wanted to to make them believe like they were historical figures is the same way they wanted people to believe the historical figures of the Old Testament were real so the Christians when they were creating or writing down the Irish mythological pantheon and re-editing it, were creating what substantially was an Old Testament of Ireland. That was the Old Testament, and Christianity, after St. Patrick, was the New Testament. So therefore, they treated a lot of the gods and goddesses inside the Irish annals and the Irish mythological pantheon, the mythological cycle, Fenian cycle and so on, they treated them in the same way that Christians had treated the characters in the Old Testament. That they were, you know, for instance, there's a very much a King David element to Finn McCool. Very much so. Uh, you have the the concept of Tara almost being reimagined as the, 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 the Jerusalem of Ireland. You have this nonsense of, that's been used by the woke people, of, you know, uh, Lou welcoming the stranger at the gates of Tara. That's the whole thing of like, you know, love thy brother and all this kind of thing. Jesus arriving at the, you know, into Jerusalem, this kind of thing. You are directly connecting him to biblical characters such as the Parthalons, who are the daughters of Noah from the Old Testament. Big one with the British Israelites much later on in time. So for someone to say, Thomas, You've got it all wrong. No, I don't have it all wrong because you don't have it all right. And now there are nine, the seven to nine hundred books being held by the Royal Irish Society Academy in both Dublin, Belfast, and London, and they've never been translated. And they say, "Oh, we don't have the resources." But the reason why they haven't translated them is because they're not going to fit in with these Christianized versions of the. The Irish mythology as people know it today. Continuing on, because there are Indo European pagan deities or characters, you don't see them as actual beings, like humans. You consider them in the same way that the, say, the Hindus considered their gods. So, therefore, Lu would be more equivalent to something like Vishnu. And this, as a god in that sense, rather than a man who lived in Ireland and fought battles. Now, regarding this particular minor controversy in that video, 
There are two battles of Maitura listed in two different mythological sources. One set in County Sligo, not far from where I live, and the other one set where the Glebestone Circle video was set, in a near a place called the Neil on the County Mayo County Galway border. There are now in the the most common battle story, the final showdown between the Fomorians and the Tua de Danon. You have the famous story where uh, Nuada of the Silver Arm is killed by Balor of the Evil Eye and then Lu comes in and destroys Balor. And then you have the dolmen at Cromlech Lodge, the Labby Rock, uh, up there, a the massive dolmen. Uh, there's a video on it in the Rumor 313 channel if you look down, where he's supposed to be buried there. Of course he's not, it's just symbolic. Now, also at the deal in that area, there is the, a standing stone right next to a house. It's actually in someone's yard, backyard. And it's where the god Lulav, Lu is supposed to have been buried, having been killed in the other Battle of Moitura. So, again, there's a conflicting thing, thing there. So you, you said that he wasn't killed in the Battle of Moitura. Well, he, he was. Well, what, is, what, 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 what killing him really means. Though the Battle of Moitura must be seen in the same context as, as Ragnarok or the, the Bhagavad Gita. This, this is a mythological epic discussing the nature of reality. And the two battles represented the battle inside and the battle above. And this is what the Bhagavad Gita represents, the battle inside Arjuna. And the battle inside on the field of Puro Washta. <coughs> Excuse me, in Puro Washta. And consequently, the concept of the internal world in, in conflict, in schism with the material world. These are wisdom traditions that are very common and specific to Indo European uh, mythological pantheons. Now, in because pagan gods are not immortals like Jesus Christ or Jehovah, they die. They die, and this is what makes them so powerful as archetypes. It's because they are not eternal. They make mistakes and they are killed. Now, part of the whole concept of killing the god within the mythological tradition, in the, in the European tradition, is so man can live. So therefore, uh, if you are totally dependent upon a god who is immortal, you yourself will never attain godhood or greatness in your life. You'll never achieve the dharma that you're capable of achieving, or through the Hindu concept, the reincarnation that will bring you eventually through into different caste systems towards towards uh, the, the total god consciousness one with the universe uh, you if you believe that you're eternally immortal and the gods are eternally gods and divine there's no place for you as to evolve as a spiritual being and that's one of the messages of the monotheistic abrahamic thing is that you you cannot ascend to godhood now you see in the Norse, it say in Ragnarok, the J Jotunmund, the, 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 the giant serpent, uh, and Thor mutually kill one another. They mutually kill one another. And this is the, the destruction of the subconscious, the ego, and the, the, the material and the spiritual at the same time. One has to die, and then the plane of Vigrid sinks below the sea, and then that's the end. That's, that's, that's the end of the, the Aesir gods. It rises up again and the new pantheon and emerges with the first man and woman who are attained, they're capable of attaining godhood. Again, probably heavily Christianized. They may have been throwing the Adam and Eve kind of thing in there at, 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 at that time. But you've got to, you see, so you can't, the, the Battle of Moitura and the Irish mythology is not a historical record. They are parables, myths, stories they are wisdom traditions that are heavily edited by christian sources excuse me by christian sources and to sit there and say oh that's not what the record says you don't know what the record says i was going by the fact that there is a grave 
a standing stone in the Neil, right near the Glebe Town circles. That's the grave of Lou, who was killed by the killed by the Fomorians in the Battle of Maitura. It doesn't matter if they were first and second. They went on. I believe that the first and second thing is a way the Christians split up the whole concept. Their ancient ancestors said there was a battle on the land, a battle of mind, a battle of material things, and then there was the subconscious world where you had an inversion. So where Balor was killed by... Lou in revenge for killing Nuada, the inversion was that also Balor kills uh, Lou. So it's like a, it's a yin and yang thing in the same way that Jotun, the, the world serpent killed Thor and Thor killed the world serpent. And this is the wheels of motion of consciousness. The, uh, you just think of it like it, it, one kill, destroy, one destroy, one kill. And this is this is what my work from the Druid Code on has been to to try and well before that even that was that was the, that was the first book I ever wrote about it to try and make sense of what these stories are about really now some may be rooted in real things and others look I'll give you one that's been definitely Christianized I told you the one about Lou and. Uh, welcoming the, the tradition of welcoming the stranger to Tara another one is a uh, or Lou sorry Lou not not Lou, Lou not being allowed in sorry that was it, Lou not being allowed in to Tara the other one was when the Fomorians came to collect the taxes now this is the Romans from the Bible sorry or maybe it could have even been the Romans landing in Ireland and they reimagined it. You know, this there was there's a we're talking about a period of about a thousand years where the Christians could do whatever they wanted to these stories. And uh, Lou refuses to pay to pay the, the, the taxes and kills the Fomorians uh, at Ushnok in the centre of Ireland. Now that's Jesus and turning the tables over to the money changers. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. What's the real story there? What's the real story? We know that there was a tribe in England called the Satanta. Satanta was the name of Ku Cullen before he killed the Hound of Cullen and became Ku Cullen. And so what did that mean? Was that a parable for something else? An invasion? Was it the Romans or not? We just don't know. Uh, the, but the, it is the, the most annoying thing is it is out there in those seven to nine hundred books held by the Royal Irish Academy that they won't translate. They won't translate them, and they say lack of resources. There's not that many people who can read Old Irish. There's loads of people and there's loads of resources. They've been sitting on those books for hundreds of years now, two hundred years at least. They've had them all, and they, they I, we don't know what's in them, and this is why. You know, it's the same censorship that... And remember, the, the Royal Irish Academy is a very Christian organisation. Very, you know, they're the ones who decided that the Round Towers of Ireland were Christian. And not, you know, they had that famous competition. I wrote about it in my Round Towers book. And uh, the belief was that the that they had, you know, the common belief in Ireland prior to that competition was that the two that they had, had built these towers. Or that was the folk belief. And there was also believed that they were pre-Christian. Now, they didn't have the, the conical top on them. That was added later in the Middle Ages. Not to make them look like church spires. But, you see, then we're seeing, a, just like this, the parable of the, the Battle of Maitura being materialistic and being uh, subconscious, uh, they, 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 materialize, they materially changed the round towers of Ireland to make them look like Christian steeples and so on. It's just and this is this this is what it's all about digging through, and although that was a minor aspect within that video, uh, it did set a few people's alarms off. But don't be don't be so self righteous about it because you don't know yourself either. And uh, I see myself in this context as someone who's reimagining or re uh, not classifying. What's the word? you know, resolving the mystery through this. I don't think anyone has properly studied Irish mythology in tandem with Indo-European mythology, particularly Hinduism. They've done it with Norse mythology big time, but they haven't done it with Hinduism. And this is that's that's the cipher, that's the key, along with the other Indo-European traditions as well. 
James Joyce said that Irish history is a nightmare from which I am trying to wake up. Thomas Sheridan says Irish mythology is a Christian nightmare from which I am trying to wake up. And that's what that comment was in that video. I should have clarified. <coughs> I should have clarified a bit better. But I hope you understand that it wasn't a mistake. It was an, my, my version of sifting through the... The, the Christian propaganda that has passed for Irish mythology. So uh, give that video a look over and remember, uh, the, you know, we don't know who, you know, this, you know, ultimately those people are connecting the Irish mythology, which is Celtic, right, for the most part. Although, again, it might be a bit rooted in a proto-shamanic tradition that was much, much older that went back to the megalithics. But those megaliths were built by the proto-Europeans who were a very different people. And again, where do we find it? It's ironic that I have to go to India and Sri Lanka to uncover the mythology of my own people. But to uncover the mythology of the megalith builders, I have to go to places where, like Sardinia and Malta and Celtiberia, where the proto-European tradition, particularly in Sardinia, survives. And it's, it's, it, I won't resolve it in my lifetime. And uh, but I'm definitely going to give it a good bang. Take care.